If you haven't seen the previous video where I talked about how I'd band-aid volume one of Ruby, make sure to check that one out first. Now, my plan for this series isn't to drastically change anything too much. It's not a whole new rewrite. Rather, it's just meant to find the little important things I think you could change around that would improve Ruby by that extra little margin. Let's not waste any time, let's dive right in. First, I would continue the idea of having the two narrators like last time. Nothing crazy, just basically have Salem and Oz introduce the ideas of this volume. Like, take Ozpin's words with Glinda from the cafeteria scene and instead rework that into this opening narration with Salem. From there, I'd change very little with the rest of episode one. The only major thing I can think of is including Sage and Scarlet here when we meet Neptune. Because, like, they're in the opening. <laughs> They're neat designs. Let's give them some actual personality, please. Oh yeah, and just like last time, include Neo and Adam in with the villains here too. Ironwood shows up and also Lionheart. Yeah, if Lionheart is going to betray us in volume five, I think it would make much more of an impact if he was better established as a part of the heroes' team beforehand. Also, seeing these three headmasters together would further drive home the idea that the vacuo headmaster is noticeably absent. As of me writing this, we don't actually know really anything much about the vacuo headmaster. Maybe they have a good reason behind why they've cut contact with Ozpin's team, but it doesn't hurt to just further establish that idea here anyways. The kids play board games and here comes Team Sun and also Penny comes back and this time she has CL with her. Oh my god, I'm just throwing in all the characters early on now, aren't I? It's the same thing as always. I just want to better establish these characters earlier on so they have more time to be given a personality. On top of that, I think it would be much better if Penny was clearly friends with everyone before she gets killed in volume three. So it means more to all of our heroes and not just Ruby. So yeah, let's just rearrange that conversation Ruby has with Penny to take place in the library, and then they all go back to hanging out together. Blake leaves, broods, and then they agree to hunt down the White Fang before briefly bumping into the baddies. And they're ready to go on their new mission when the boy squad shows up and volunteers to help. Here is where things are really going to start to change, because I'm rearranging the teams around a little bit, and also I'm changing some of their missions too. First, Ruby, Weiss, and Neptune are teamed up. They are going to the CCT to check the records of recent dust store robberies to try to find more info about who's stealing the dust. Second, Yang, Sage, and Scarlet are going to Junior's bar to get information on Tortwick. Third, Blake and Sun are investigating the White Fang recruitment rally to see what their next plans are. Everything with Blake and Sun would stay the same. Literally, nothing needs to change here. When Yang gets to Junior's bar, he would have more information for her. He would explain that Tortwick hired his boys to help him, but dropped them on very short notice, right before the school year started, but Torchwick didn't explain why. Junior would say he's fine with not working for him anymore anyways, because Torchwick promised Junior he would get a cut of the dust that was being stolen, but then Torchwick went back on his word and kept all of it. Yang and the boys would ask how much dust he thinks Torchwick stole, and Junior would say, tons. Yang and the boys would discuss with each other what would Torchwick and the White Fang need that much dust for. Maybe they're starting a black market for dust? Maybe they're trying to cause a massive explosion somewhere? Maybe they're trying to supply enough bullets for an army? But none of them can figure out why Torchwick would want to do any of these things specifically. Ruby, Weiss, and Neptune would go to the CCT. Ruby is jazzed about the tower. Weiss is trying to flirt with Neptune, who would be noticeably not reciprocating her feelings. Suddenly, Ruby sees Penny across the way. She notices Penny looks like she's hiding and Ruby wonders what's up. Weiss insists Ruby should go check on Penny, using this opportunity to be alone with Neptune some more. Ruby approaches Penny, who explains that she's trying to hide from CL. Ruby asks why she's doing that, and Penny explains that she's always on a schedule, always has to do what other people tell her to do, and she just wants the chance to just be a normal girl for a while, implying that this is a thing she does regularly, like sneaking away from her team and from Ironwood and everything like that, to just hang out and be normal for a little bit. Ruby helps Penny slip past CL, and they laugh as they run down the street. Weiss and Neptune go and check the recent 
dust robbery records, realizing only businesses with Schnee dust products are being targeted. And also, it's only businesses located in Vale. Uh, and if you're wondering why it's businesses with Schnee products, that'll come into play way later. It'll be connected to Jacques working with Watts, but that won't be a thing until like volume seven or whatever. I'm just starting to hint towards that here. Anyways, Ruby and Penny are bonding some more, getting to develop their friendship together a little bit, and then they see the robots, and then two people give chase. Two very specific people. Why, it's the other two members of Penny's team? Holy cow, it's not just nameless soldiers, it's actually Mero and Fiona. I'm introducing everyone early on. You can't stop me. <laughs> so yeah, I decided it should be Mero and Fiona because one, I like them. <laughs> I like their designs and I like their semblances. Fiona's weapon could use work, but Marrow's is super cool. And two, they both seem like they could be young enough that they could like pass for being in the same school year as the others. And three, it'll make the division of their team with the Aesops and the Happy Huntresses much more interesting down the line. But for now, it's Penny Polandina, Mero Amin, Fiona Time, and Ciel Soleil. Team Patch. Like, like patchwork. <laughs> Anyways, they run. Penny prevents Ruby from getting isekai'd into an actual anime. She's not a real girl. Ruby and Penny have the sweetest heart to heart and then she lobs her into a dumpster where the rest of Team Patch finally catch up to her. Then it's the paladin fight and nothing changes except Sage and Scarlet are here now. And maybe the boys could have been like a bit more useful before being ejected from the fight. Have them clear cars out of the way or something so they don't get obliterated by the paladin, you know? Paladin fight, hooray, everything's cool. Next up, I'm taking out the whole Pyrrha versus Cardin fight, which I know it's a very badass action scene, but I'm gonna change things up a little bit. Don't worry, Pyrrha will still get to be a badass. <laughs> the episode starts with the heroes musing that the visitors from Vacuo have finally arrived. They head into Glinda's combat class, and Glinda says she wants a 1v1 of one of the Beacon students and one of the Vacuo newcomers to get everyone acquainted with each other. Everyone votes for Pyrrha to represent Beacon, and on the Vacuo side, she's fighting Coco. That's right, I'm completely changing Team Coffee. They are now students from Shade Academy. And not only that, Shade Academy is now a Faunus only school. Everyone from Shade is a Faunus. So, a while ago, I had a Golden Oldies animation challenge. It was great. One of those submissions was from the lovely Pretty Weird Duck, who had an AU idea where Lionheart was the headmaster of an all Faunus school, and was also a cool badass. It's a great submission. You should watch it. There's a link to it in the description. You should check it out. <laughs> Anyways, I liked the idea so much that I'm going to just steal it. Thank you so much, Pretty Weird Duck. You are cool and I appreciate you and I appreciate how much you've inspired me. <laughs> You're awesome. Everyone leave a comment talking about how cool Pretty Weird Duck is. They're the best. So yeah, Shade is now an all fauna school and I'm completely changing Team Coffee's fairy tale inspirations now too. Which will also solve the problem of Coco being named after Coco Chanel, who was not a good person. We can just put that right there. Don't you worry about it. Coco and Fox are now the fox and the hound. Fox can have a fox tail. Coco can have little dog ears. Velvet is now going to be both the Velveteen Rabbit and also doubling up on the hair from the tortoise and the hare. Yasuhashi being the tortoise. He's going to have a shell on his back. And I know what you might be thinking. You might be like, hey, isn't Harriet supposed to be the hare? We can worry about that later. For now, new team coffee. Hooray! Pyrrha fights Coco. It's cool. Sets up their personality maybe some friendly rivalries going on. Glinda calls for the next fight where Mercury asks to fight Pyrrha. Glinda's like, she just did one, that's not fair. But if Pyrrha agrees to do it anyway, he figures out her semblance and reports to Cinder. From here, nothing leading up to the dance needs to change at all. Well, like I'd give them better outfits, but that's a totally different matter. Everything can stay exactly the same. Just now we got some other students to include in the dance because I've introduced them a lot earlier. Could you imagine Penny, Ciel, Mero, and Fiona doing the robot together at the dance. That'd be so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, Jean's mad that Neptune turned down Weiss but gets distracted and goes to talk to Pyrrha, where I'm going to change things a little bit. Rather than it just be that no one asked her, I'm gonna have it be that she turned down anyone who did ask her. And when Jean asks her why, she'll say that she was hoping someone specific was going to ask her out, but he never did. When Jean asks who this guy is, she'll say it doesn't matter. He likes someone else anyways and leaves. As she does, suddenly Neptune is there who tries to talk to Jean. Jean grills him about turning down Weiss saying something like 
what's wrong with you? Do you not respect her or something? Where Neptune reveals he turned her down because he wanted to ask Jean to the dance instead. So yeah, I'm changing up Neptune quite a bit. If you've seen my daily reviews for Ruby's first three volumes, I made it very clear I really don't like Neptune. Characters whose gimmick is flirt with all girls aren't terrible if they're done well. Brock, for example, from Pokemon is always very funny. But when they're not done well, I find them infuriating. And that's where Neptune lands. He's just a chauvinistic asshole who's annoying. And this plotline in the original being, ooh, I'll flirt with Weiss all the time, but I'll turn her down because I can't dance was so stupid. And I don't like it. And I don't like this character at all. So I'm changing it. I'm making it a love triangle because damn it, if we're gonna have a prom episode, we might as well lean into the prom style tropes, right? <laughs> Jean's got a crush on Weiss. Weiss has a crush on Neptune. Neptune has a crush on Jean. Shenanigans ensue. Also, because like, why else did Neptune walk out here onto the balcony? Right? Like, he comes out here just to talk to Jean alone. He clearly wanted to ask him to dance. <laughs> Jean explains he doesn't reciprocate the feelings, and Neptune says he figured, but it was worth a shot, saying something like, It's not like if I keep asking you over and over again, it'll change your mind. It'll just make you think I don't respect your opinion. And then Jean will realize that that's exactly what he's been doing with Weiss this whole time. And then he'll say, I was the one who didn't respect her. And it all comes full circle. <laughs> Jean goes back in and apologizes to Weiss for how he's been acting this whole time. Jean, Weiss, and Neptune hang out and just become better friends. Hooray! Pyrrha would then go talk to Nora, who clearly knows Pyrrha's crushing on Jean, and Nora would ask her why doesn't she just ask Jean out herself, rather than sit around and wait for him to do it. And then Pyrrha would say something like, she's waiting for it to be the right time and leave it up to fate, which is basically just me leaning into her ideals about destiny here, establishing that for her character a little bit earlier on. From here, not much needs to change. Ruby leaves, Cinder's doing evil things, she tells the headmasters things are happening in the southeast, Zwei is sent in the mail, Ozpin has a speech, lets the team go to Mountain Glen, Ublek is their chaperone, and they land on location. Okay, now, real talk. I have had the hardest time figuring out what to do with Ublek here because I like the idea of his questions, I like the idea of their answers, I like the idea of the combat sprinkled throughout, but also they all could just be improved. The combat could be more cohesive, their answers to his questions could feel more personal or more detailed, so I really wasn't sure what to do because the only real answer is just fix the dialogue and the animation, but like that's kind of a given for all of Ruby. Ultimately, I've decided not to linger on it any more than that. They talk, they grow, then Ruby, while on guard, will watch as Y takes off. She won't be asleep, because Yang should have noticed her leave if she was standing guard, right? Why didn't she notice her own sister leaving? <laughs> Zwei will take off, not just to pee, but he will actually have caught the scent of the two white fang goons. Ruby's phone doesn't have service though, so she decides to follow them and finds the entrance to their base. Now that she knows where it is, she'll turn back to go get the others, but is suddenly ambushed, and it's Yuma Trifa and Ilya. I bet you thought I was done introducing characters early. Ha 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 ha. You can't stop me. <laughs> I'm axing the lieutenant entirely, and I'm giving Adam his own team with these three. They knock out Ruby and bring her to Torchwick. Meanwhile, Zwei runs back to camp and wakes up the other girls who rush to find Ruby. Some Torchwick banter, the others show up, bombs, boom, train fight. Yang still fights Neo, and Blake still fights Torchwick, but Ruby and Ublek, rather than fighting a paladin, have a fight with Ilya and Trifa, and Weiss fights Yuma. They fight, some people lose, Adam's team jumps off the train, realizing they're closing in on their destination, and they crash into Vale. And then for the big finale fight, again, just like, have more characters looking cool. Actually have Sun and Neptune and the rest of their team fighting monsters. Don't have Cinder show up in her freaking villain dress. Team Coffee and Juniper jump in to help. Hooray! Torchwick is arrested. And then I would cut out this, like, council drilling Ozpin at the end, I'd have it just be Ironwood and Leo talking to him directly, asking him about, is this actually working? Are we safe? Should we cancel the tournament? Ozpin will insist things are going to be fine. This will be his hubris. 
it's not going to be fine. <laughs> Adam and his team roll up with the villains and tease volume three. And then the end credit scene would probably have to be completely changed, which sucks because I really like this one. Instead, have it be Yang digging through a box filled with pictures until she finds one of her as a little kid and she sees Raven in it. And Yang would say, I knew it, mom. And then that's it. That's the end of volume two. <laughs> so I hope you liked this. Really the biggest changes I made was just introducing fun characters earlier on and have them like actually talk to each other and develop more, which gives us more time to spend with these characters, which is fun. If you would Band-Aid Volume 2, how would you go about it? And let me know if you want to see me Band-Aid Volume 3. Shout out to my $10 patrons. You're all amazing. Nako, Andrew, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, G Extreme, Classy Critic, Noah Perkins, Sunny Shy, Jake, Amber, Hype Man, Zero to Hero, Isaiah, Scaring Crows, Not All That Evil, Messiah Complex, Jacob, Ben Sketchbook, The Watcher, Omega Fighter, Trash, Wild Pilot, Josh, Swift Cannon, The Infinity Effect, Gino, Twisty, and Juan. Yeah, I hope you liked this video. I have so much fun with these band-aiding videos. It's so- I love introducing new characters early. Team Patch is my new favorite thing. I love the idea of the all fauna school in vacuo. Just these little things that just make me happy. And I hope you like them as well. Again, if you would change volume two, how would you go about band-aiding it? And if you have any ideas for volume three, and if you want to see me do volume three, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>